22.2 exercise prescription. So an exercise prescription can be used alongside a person's current medication and other treatment or it may be used as a complete alternative. It's all dependent on the person and their situation. They are devised by fitness or health professionals who work alongside GPs to devise the best possible programme that takes into consideration any possible contraindications or other health risks that may be affected by the programme in order to minimise the potential for risks to occur or to aggravate any pre-existing medical conditions. Exercise prescriptions will include the frequency, so how often they would exercise, the intensity, which is how hard they should work, the time, so the duration of the exercising period, and the type of exercise they should do, whether it's aerobic, anaerobic, resistance, uh, things like that. The extent to which the client sticks to the prescription will affect the effectiveness of it and the overall outcome. A contraindication is a physical or mental condition or factor that increases the risk involved when engaging in a particular activity. So a contraindication may also refer to when a treatment should not be used because it may be harmful to the client rather than being beneficial. There's two different types of contraindications, absolute and relative. An absolute contraindication is quite non-negotiable, so it's more or less definitely going to cause harm to the person, which may potentially be life-threatening and therefore it should be avoided at all costs. Whereas a relative contraindication is somewhat more flexible, so whereby the treatment or exercise may cause harm and so should be treated with caution, but it can still be used. So like a general rule of thumb is that it should only be used if the benefits outweigh the negatives. So our first group of people we'll be looking at is the elderly. So um, contraindications of that are more common with elderly people are ongoing unstable angina. So this is an absolute contraindication. Uh, the reasoning for it is that not enough blood can get to the heart um, and that causes a lack of oxygen supply, which can obviously cause a lot of damage to a person. And the fact that it's unstable is why it's an absolute because it's not being controlled. Decompensated heart failure, another absolute one, which is the structural or functional change in the heart. Um, so it's enabled to eject or accommodate the blood in the heart which is obviously a risk when you're not doing exercise so by exercising you'd be putting yourself at a much higher risk of causing injury and um, other medical issues resting hypertension this is a relative contraindication um, so obviously naturally they've already got a higher blood pressure and blood cr- pressure increases the exercise and too high can be quite bad and cause issues Mental impairment with limited ability to safely cooperate, this is a relative contraindication, just where someone can't follow instructions and they might do it wrong and it could cause an injury, but it might not. Um, Known obstruction, left main main coronary artery stenosis, this is a relative contraindication. Um, It can cause myocardial infraction and symptoms of angina, but not necessarily. That's just a possibility. So for elderly types of exercise, it'd be good for them is swimming because it helps to raise the heart rate, takes the pressure off their joints, increases synovial fluid. They can go at their own pace and it's a form of cardio. um, So that will increase their stamina, which is good for general fitness and improves their circulation and blood flow. Yoga, this improves posture, stretching and strengthening exercises, help to reduce aches and pains. It's a form of relaxation, um, helps them develop different breathing techniques. Um, and it's a class type setting so it's social and non-competitive there's walking, this helps to increase heart rate reduces the risk of high blood pressure lowers blood sugar, reduces pain linked to arthritis and it boosts mental health by reducing endorphins and it can be social so for elderly people I'd recommend three to four times a week of exercise, doing any of the kind of ones I've mentioned Um, working at moderate intensity obviously it's dependent really on the type of elderly person because some are more active than others so some can push themselves a bit harder some have got physical disabilities that are actually stopping them from working as hard as they would so they might uh, work at a lighter intensity okay. time 30 to 60 minutes again it's kind of dependent on the person because elderly is quite a big bracket of people to cover um, but 30 should be like a minimum of exercise to be doing um so the type is like light cardio and light resistance work. You don't want to put too much stress on uh, bones and muscles in case you cause an injury. So the second group of people is obese people. Uh, so contraindications are common here is resting hypertension. As we saw earlier, this is a relative contraindication. 
because of the high blood pressure blood pressure can increase with exercise too high can be bad but this can be kind of like monitored and limited within an exercise by not doing certain exercises so like avoiding high impact aerobic exercises isometric muscle contractions and power work as this can increase uh, the blood pressure too high uh, which is obviously an issue with the hypertension um jumping because that causes force through the joints um single leg workouts because of the increased amount of uh weight they're carrying on their body that's a lot of weight to be putting through like one specific point of contact on the floor um and anaerobic sprints because this can affect uh coronary heart disease um which is another contraindication because it can restrict the blood flow to the heart which can result in angina and heart attacks and arrhythmia which is an irregular heartbeat so that's where people get like heart palpitations if you're fluttering in their chest um, another contraindication is diabetes. This is a relative one because as long as it's controlled, it's fine. Uh, but yeah, just having high blood sugar and that can cause damage to blood vessels, organs and nerves. Um, can lead to heart disease or stroke. And the limited blood supply to the chest can again cause angina. But if it's controlled, someone's make it, taking the medication properly and managing it, then it's not going to be an issue for exercise. So exercises I prescribe is swimming for the same reasons as earlier and it takes um, the body weight off of their joints and so that kind of makes them more mobile and they can do like a wider range of movements in the water so they might do like water aerobics or something. Um, walking again for the same reasons earlier as I mentioned with the elderly um, and cycling this helps to raise heart rate it's less impact on the joints. Um, decreased body weight acting on the body because they're like sitting down as opposed to standing up which is going to affect their knees and ankles um, enables them to get fresh air outside it's social and it can again release endorphins and it's a form of cardio um, so frequency four to five times a week because obviously with obese people like obesity is a thing in general is can be quite devastating to a person's health so you want to help them um, lose weight kind of like as quickly and as safely as possible so by encouraging them to do it four to five times a week is quite good um light to moderate uh intensity because it depends on the kind of exercise they're doing if they're doing something like walking um obviously that is naturally quite a light kind of thing whereas if they're doing something like swimming or water exercises that's a more moderate form of exercise it called, like depends how hard they want to push themselves um, time 30 to 45 minutes kind of like as a starting point and then as you get more confident and start to feel fitter you'd want to increase that time to maybe like an hour or so um, and the type is like non-weight bearing kind of activities such as like the swimming and cycling and kind of cardio based work uh, yeah to improve their stamina um, going back to their elderly certain things that should be avoided with this um, cardiac patients and those who have back pain should avoid uh, using heavy weights isometric uh, muscle contractions and power work for those who suffer with hypertension um, sit ups are bad for people with lower back strain um, and full lunges and deep squats should also be avoided uh, for people who have any current issues with their knees because it puts a lot of strain on those that will cause quite a lot of pain for them which you don't want so the third group of people is pregnant people pregnant women um so contraindications they have uh they've got restricted lung disease this is like an absolute uh contraindication uh, because it means they've got a reduced diffusion capacity so they're not able to get as much oxygen to themselves and then that would mean even less oxygen to the like baby developing and that could cause a lot of like debilitating issues to the unborn baby um persistent second or third trimester bleeding this is an absolute contraindication because the trauma can lead to more severe things and like potential miscarriages and stuff for the baby um relative contraindications are severe anemia so that just kind of like limits your oxygen carrying capacity because you've got a decreased amount of iron um, but this doesn't like stop you from exercising at all you just gotta like be mindful of it and just up your iron levels um, having a history of extremely sedentary lifestyle so obviously if someone's going from not doing any exercise when they weren't pregnant to trying to do loads of exercise when they are pregnant that's gonna be a lot of shock to the body so again it's not like you can't do it it's just be careful and be sensible with it 
um someone with multiple pregnancies so someone with twins because that's like even more strain on the body than someone who's just pregnant normally um so things that they should avoid is uh no jerky or bouncy movements jumping or sudden changes in directions and for anyone who's pregnant over four months uh don't lie on their back because i'm pretty sure like pushes on the baby or something and avoid hot humid environments because this can lead to dehydration which again you've got to think of the effects that's going to have on the baby um so exercises that are good for pregnant people um swimming this raises heart rate improves efficiency at transport and utilizing oxygen uh for the baby that's not been born yet um it reduces the risks of developing circulatory issues such as cramp and varicose veins which is quite common with pregnant women it improves the blood flow to the placenta reduces risk of uh some form of diabetes and high blood pressure and there's less je- uh less pressure on the joints and the bump and it stimulates blood flow and reduces swelling which again is quite a common issue with pregnant people um yoga and pilates this improves posture stretching and strengthening exercises help to reduce pregnancy aches and pains it's a form of relaxation and the breathing techniques learned can be used during labor and it can strengthen deep abdominal and pelvic floor muscles which will be used during the labour so it makes it easier for them Uh, something like indoor station recycling uh, raises the heart rate it puts no strain on the bump because there's no pressure actually applied to it you're just sitting upright Um, there's less impact on the joints because obviously they're carrying that extra body weight so you don't want to put any further impact on the joints and further weight for them to carry Um, so kind of like similar advantages as there were with the swimming and you can ins- with the fact that it's indoor and stationary you can ensure a controlled environment so there's no weather changes and there's no sudden hills that you can't get around because you can just adjust the settings on the bike to make it however you want um so frequency three to four times a week because obviously a lot of the benefits that come with it you want to try and maximize those um intensity moderate but maybe lighter later on in the pregnancy as the strain on the body becomes greater um time 30 to 60 minutes um i thought probably like 60 for those who were at the earlier stages of pregnancy and then 30 for those who were further on in the pregnancy um because maybe they can't last as long and they'll be fatigued a lot quicker and the type of exercise is just again kind of like non-weight bearing things and just things that are quite gentle but still stimulating for the body um yeah